Hey, hey, this is OK, OK. Today I'm coloring a watermelon girl from Wonka's new tour, the audiobook written by Bree Ridge and performed by BJ Bambi. It was recently bonus material released for free if you bought the new issue for Windy Wonka Chapter 2, Issue 1, The Psycho Chocolate Meltdown. It's supposed to be like psychotic meltdown, breakdown, <laughs> that kind of thing. But anyway, uh, this is Chapter 1, Never Swallow the Seeds. And as you might guess, it features a girl turning into a watermelon. So that is what I'm illustrating here. The audio book is going to end up being about 12 hours of listening. And once it's all finished, there's going to be uh, like seven chapters, maybe eight. And this is going to be um, about an hour of listening to uh, when you buy chapter one. It's going to be $4, and you can find it on my DeviantArt page. This is the first chapter and the prologue. The prologue is basically just kind of giving you some introduction, setting up the characters, telling you about the chocolate factory, what's been going on with it, and why these characters are there. Basically, just kind of story set up, and then chapter one is when it gets started. So I thought by uh, you know giving a little sample today, you might get a feeling for what it's like. And I was also going to show you just to be coloring, I'm going to be coloring while this audiobook plays, a little sample from it. I did another sample earlier, um, but I was playing it through the speaker and recording it into the microphone, and that ended up in bad quality. So I want you guys to realize that it is good quality. I'm going to fix that mistake and only do it through the desktop audio, turn it off my microphone once I get it playing. So that way, you should be able to hear it well and not have interference or anything like that. All right, so there's only been one other time where I drew or colored a watermelon girl, and that was in Sanderson's Stepsisters. Uh, I'll pull that up right here. It's in issue nine, and you can see here, it's uh, one of the witches turning into a watermelon. Um, the next page is disastrous for her. But uh, yeah, I like the watermelon uh, kind of transformation. You get this basically kind of blueberry thing and it is a little more rigid and um, tight feeling than a blueberry. A uh, blueberry is basically a sphere and with the watermelon you kind of get a uh, oblong oval. So uh, I'm going to stop talking soon. I'll, what was I had one other thing I wanted to say. Um, which <laughs> Windy Wonka issue two uh, is in progress. I'm beginning to uh, you know like finalize all the writings and get that script nailed down. Uh, we've got a basic outline and everything like that sorted out. I just need to uh, clean it up and get it on uh, a Word document. Then uh, I'm also doing commissions right now. Um, the commission round is closed uh, this round, so if you want a commission, be sure to look next time. Right after I finish a comic, that's when commissions will open up if you'd like one. Um, this round we're going to have a sequence, a three-page comic, and a one-page character drawing, which is going to be Wendy Wonka with a huge ass. And then the other one is a three-page comic in Wendy Wonka's factory where a girl's turning into a uh, a big 500 pound pig <laughs> so uh, and she's gonna enjoy it so if you like an animal transformation be sure to look for that uh, it should help me prepare for uh, next issue issue 2 which will feature cow transformations if you're excited about that then uh, you should uh, be in touch and stay in touch. Watch for when Wendy Wonka issue two will be ready. Um, it is going to be the next comic I'm working on. So I have one other piece of good news. While we were speaking of Sanderson's stepsisters, that reminded me. I have gone ahead and put the finale issue of Sanderson's stepsisters 
on the schedule for this year. We're going to do it sometime around uh, Halloween, get kind of a nice creepy uh, vibe in the air going. And this will be issue 14. This will be the final chef, final issue of the series. It might end up being a long, a little bit longer than other issues, just to make sure I can squeeze everything in. But it should be amazing. It should be awesome and fun. Um, if you haven't gotten into the series, you can go over uh, and check out the series. It's called Sanderson Stepsisters, and it's about three witches who kind of get into witchcraft, and they're way over their heads, and um, lots of craziness ensues. So I'm going to go ahead and begin this preview of the audiobook. It will be uh, up for sale in my DeviantArt gallery. Um, I'm not getting any of the proceeds of this, though. I'm hosting it with BJ Bambi and B Ridge. Uh, all the proceeds will go to B Ridge and BJ Bambi. So without any further ado, I'm going to cut off my mic and bring in the audiobook. I will see you next time. At the end, I'm just going to cut out after the sample's over. Be sure to hit a like or subscribe for more videos. This is okay, 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 okay. Thanks for watching, and hop on over to the Evening Art Gallery if you'd like to see this finished. Thanks. Though she quickly stopped talking to wipe up the melon juice running down her chin. Glad to hear you're all fans, beamed Wonka, but please... Don't forget to spit out the seeds. At this reminder, one by one, the girl spat the watermelon seeds, which were actually smaller than the typical watermelon seeds, into the bucket. Except for Jean. A journalism major, Jean had never been very superstitious. To the short-haired brunette, the fears about swallowing watermelon seeds were purely an old wives' tale. Besides, she was enjoying her Wonka melon way too much and didn't want to interrupt her treat by spitting into a bucket like a hick. She took another bite and swallowed, seeds and all. In no time at all, the girls had finished their melons and were wiping the juice from their mouths. They hadn't anticipated how juicy the Wonka melon could be. Wonka smiled at them. Excellent! It appears Wonkas are destined to be a huge success. I'll say burped Tiffany. Everyone laughed as the cheerleader covered her mouth embarrassed. Moving on! Wonka led the girls out of the room and down the large hallway. On either side of them, large open windows showed different rooms in the factory. Behind the glass to their left, an Oompa Loompa was examining a clipboard as various spheres of different colors floated around the room. What are those? asked Gazelle. Those are our extra light gobstoppers. We're working to provide a never-ending meal without the never-ending calories. A few of the girls nodded appreciatively. Jean, meanwhile, was having trouble focusing on the amazing displays surrounding her. She was beginning to experience a cramping in her stomach. Man, maybe I shouldn't have eaten so much, she thought, chiding herself for getting carried away. I should really be on a diet. Despite the fact that she had a decent body, she was never happy with it. Her ass was too big for her, her body too wide. In fact, if anything, she was slightly thinner than average, but you'd be hard pressed convincing her that. The part of her body that she was most unsatisfied with, however, were her A-cut breasts. Although they were perfectly lovely, she was accurately aware of the fact the rest of the family, well, the women, all sported C's or larger. She was getting tired of always feeling inferior to them and had recently vowed to get in shape no matter what. And this is what you do when you want to lose weight? You go to a freaking candy factory? <sighs> okay, Jean, when you get home, first thing you're doing is hitting the treadmill. The cramps were getting worse and Jean gritted her teeth, but still no one seemed to notice. They had reached the end of the hallway and were entering another room. This one was wide and stretched in all directions, like a gymnasium. In one corner of the room was a long table where several Oompa Loompas sat, eating from brown bags. A few were reading magazines. Wonka turned and faced the girls excitingly. 
our next stop of the tour. This is one of my many break rooms where... No! Oh, the girls in Wonka looked over simultaneously to Jean's face, who was hunched over, clutching her stomach. Beside her, Sarah put a hand on her shoulder. Jean, are you okay? What's wrong? I'm fine. Jean took a deep breath and tried to straighten herself up. It's probably nothing. I just ate a bit too much. It's no. She doubled back over. Give her some space, Wonka ordered. Stand back. Everyone backed away a few steps, except for Sarah, who was still holding Jean's shoulder. The cramps were starting to ease a little, so Jean slowly straightened herself once again. When she did, however, she looked down at her stomach and gasped. Peeking from between her jeans and her white tank top was her belly, which had grown half an inch or so, as if she had just eaten a full meal. Oh my god, I feel so full. Look at my stomach. It's okay, Jean, consoled Sarah. Just lie down. You had a bit too much to eat, maybe, but we'll run it off tomorrow. Jean nodded slowly, but felt the pressure build in her again. Ugh! She moaned. I feel way past full. And sure enough, her stomach had pushed out even further. Now her belly was fully pronounced, as if she were a few months pregnant. This was more than simply having a bit too much to eat. Oh my god! Oh my god! What's happening to me? Jean panicked, grasping her belly. It felt incredibly sensitive and jiggled at her touch. She looked up, terrified at the other girls gaping at her. Sarah let go of her shoulder and slowly backed away, eyes wide. Why are they just standing there? She wondered widely. Why are they doing anything? What the hell's wrong with her? shouted Tiffany. Is she having an allergic reaction or something? I th think so, <laughs> replied Melanie. She's starting to turn green or something. What? Cradling her growing belly in one hand, Jean held her other hand up to her face. Was it true? She looked at it and was relieved to see that it was her regular light peach hue. Whew! That would have been weird. However, once she looked back down at her stomach, all relief had vanished. It had begun to take over a vibrant light green hue, starting at her belly button, trailing from there towards the rest of her stomach. Her stomach, by the way, had extended a few more inches, about half a foot tall. Green? muttered Wonka. But that doesn't make sense, unless... He looked up at Jean, terrified. Young lady, did you swallow the Wonka melon seeds? I, I, Jean stammered, feeling her belly dig into her too tight jeans. A part of her wanted to pull off her pants, which were constricting her, but she felt humiliation enough. No need to strip to her underwear in front of all these people. I thought they were harmless. Ugh! She felt the pressure again, only now she was feeling it in other parts of her body. Her ass and thighs, her breast. Please, Mr. Wonka, you have to help me. Help you? Wonka's face turned from terror to anger and frustration. You deliberately disobeyed me. I don't know if there's anything I can do except wait until the process is complete. P process? asked Jean timidly. As she asked that, she undid the buttons on her jeans. The pressure was getting too much to bear. She was still hoping she wouldn't have to strip, but it was simply too tight to leave her pants done up. After the last button was undone, she felt slightly better, but her belly quickly filled the empty space behind her. She could feel her ass cheeks rusing themselves ballooning ever so slightly. Oh my God, not my ass. Yes, the process.
Wonka sighed. His anger faded, replaced only with sadness. I mentioned earlier that Wonka melon seeds were a special formula of my own design. Each seed is loaded with growth enhancement chemicals in its DNA, so that as it grows it fills to the brim with flavorful juices. That's why Wonka melons are so delicious and rich with flavor. At this, a small expression of pride flickered across his face, but he quickly stifled it. So you're saying she's filling up, began Kristen, with enhancement watermelon juice? Yes. Or should I say, Wonka melon juice? Sarah turned towards the Oompa Loompa sitting at the table. One of you, help her, she cried. But Wonka grabbed her shoulder. Young lady, do you not remember what I said? This is the break room. Those Oompa Loompas are on break. Jean began to whimper, but her whimper was cut short by another moan of discomfort as she continued to grow. The button of her tank top had been pushed up by her now massive belly, but her pants weren't yielding the same way. She tried to reach over her belly to push her jeans down some more, but her hips and her ass flared slightly, making it much more difficult. Her jeans were too tight and she was having increasing trouble reaching over her sides to get enough leverage. She pushed as best as she could, her belly jiggling with her struggles. Or was that more of a sloshing? But it was no use. Help! She cried feebly. Sarah and Angela rushed to her side, the rest of the girls staying a few paces behind. What is it, asked Sarah? What do you need? Pants. Jean took a deep breath. Too tight. Sarah and Angela looked at each other uncertainly, but then Angela grabbed the front of the jeans and tried to pull them down. Sarah steeled herself and grabbed from behind, struggling to pull the pants downward. Jean reached to either side of herself and tried to help as best she could. However, Jean's growing ass and hips pushed back as if they refused to let themselves be exposed. It's not budging, huffed Angela. Keep it up, replied Sarah. Eventually, with a combined effort from all three girls, Jean's jeans tore from her body with a loud rip. Okay, thank you for sticking around for a preview of Chapter 1, Wonka's New Tour. You can find it over on my DeviantArt webpage and gallery. Uh, you can also find Wendy Wonka, Chapter 2, Issue 1, The Psycho Chocolate Meltdown. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, the uh, audiobook, if you purchase Chapter 1, it will have sound effects and some music uh, clips in it. The uh, bonus material that came with Wendy Wonka issue one did not have those because we did not have time to get around to those with the uh, deadline. But if you purchase the chapter one of the audiobook, you will get the sound effects and the music. Thank you for watching. Thank you for stopping by. Please check out the Wonka's new tour audiobook. Um, if there's any more questions you have, please leave a comment or join me over on DeviantArt. I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching.